Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I thought today would be a great day to bring the old-fashioned tutorials back and show you an exciting transformation effect that you can accomplish in Adobe After Effects. So we're going to change outfits in this instance, but you can use this technique to teleport or to disintegrate or do whatever the hell you want. I'll leave the imagination up to you. So I've prepared these two video files for you. If you want, you can follow along with the exact same video files as me. I will link them in the description below. And let's open up Adobe After Effects. All right, so here we are in Adobe After Effects and I have these two video files. So I'm here in my living room and this is actually from a little sketch that I have been working on, but I'm going to uh, ignore the first part because here it's actually a hologram that I'm going to be adding uh, to this video. But on the next part, I'm going to be transforming into uh, a different outfit. So I will drag this into a new composition right here. And I will just find a moment where I'm about to transform. Like that's right here. I'm going to press B on the keyboard. And until I am like right here, I'm going to head over to edit and split my layer here. So here is how I have recorded these two shots. I just positioned myself and acted like I'm transforming into a different outfit. I remembered how I am standing, how my hands are. And then after that I've done my act, I'm just placing something on uh, the location that I'm standing exactly. And then I went upstairs, changed my outfit and left the camera recording on a tripod. And I came back and then I stood in the exact same spot, hoping it would kind of look similar. Uh, if you have a camera guy, that's great. I didn't have that opportunity in that moment but it actually turned out pretty great and I'm in the exact same spot so that's awesome so here I'm going to then move over until I exit the shot and we can also see that the light is changing all the time in the scene that does make everything harder but um, it works out because it changes uh, very regularly and the light that changes is kind of representing a TV that is playing in the background so that's why uh, you can see the light flickering here in uh, these videos so for the second shot I'm also going to bring this into the same composition and here I want to do the same thing so I'm going to solo this layer and I'm just going to find the moment where I am positioning myself and where I'm starting the act of getting into the shot. And I'm just going to trim it until there and then like do my act right here. And right here I'm in the scene. So maybe we even start it from here. So obviously I'm not really paying attention afterwards because that's uh, all the act that I had to do. So I'm going to trim it until there and then I'm just going to trim it until here. So all I want to do now is place this clip over the other clip and make sure that the timing is correct. So I'm going to look over at this clip right here. I should start transforming, let's say. And so the other clip should overlap a little bit right here. And so the overlay is happening right here. The only problem here is the background color. So I'm going to just unsolo this and find a better spot for the light. So right here we are in orange. So maybe we'll have uh, the transformation happen here. And then if we enable this layer again, we can see it's also orange. So I'm just matching up the lights here. Now we need to create our transition mat. So I'm going to create a new composition, call it transition mat and click OK. And in this layer, I'm going to create a new solid layer and make it black and then create another solid layer and this I'm going to make it white. And all I want to do is now go over here to my rectangle tool and create a mask like this and then go over here to the selection tool and we're going to just animate this part here. So I'm going to press M on the keyboard, create a stopwatch for the mask path and then move over like let's say three seconds and then we're going to move this top part all the way up so we're actually filling the screen with white here by the way before we continue this video i quickly wanted to mention that we are currently launching our epic vfx academy again so that means the doors are open again and you are able to be one of my students and learn epic vfx together with me and look over my shoulders if that's something that sounds interesting to you definitely check out the link in the description whether you are a beginner or already have experience this is definitely an academy where you will find a lot of benefit whether being helped in our discord community server or getting feedback on 
on your work on getting better or just for these final little details that you need to apply in your work to finally get that A great look in your final results. And honestly, visual effects is an up and coming career choice because of the metaverse and everything shifting into the digital. There are a lot of new and great opportunities for visual effects artists. So if you wanna learn After Effects from A to Z and also wanna learn how to create epic looking visual effects, then literally everything related to VFX, you can find it in the Epic VFX Academy. A link will be in the description for you. And we are currently doing a limited time bonus for the people that decide to join like right now you are getting a free portable green screen so you can start doing some really awesome background replacements yourself at home you're also getting a bunch of other bonuses like 60 percent off on the adobe creative cloud you're getting max on one which means cinema 4d and the red giant plugins for just four dollars so you can follow our academy at ease and study at ease without too much head worries links are in the description description and without further ado let's get back to the tutorial all right so here in adobe after effects again i'm going to continue with my transition the first thing that i want to do is make this edge a lot more roughened up so i'm going to press f on the keyboard and i'm going to mask it well actually feather it quite a bunch just like this and so this looks really cool uh, but it's a little bit too um yeah soft so i'm going to click on this white solid and i'm going over to the effects presets like right here and search for rough and edges. If you if you don't see the effects and presets, you can find them right here in effects and presets. I'm using a plugin called Effects Console from uh, Video Copilot just to optimize my workflow and be faster. Uh, it's completely for free, but with control and space, I can bring up the exact same search from here and apply my effects faster. So I'm going to search for the rough and edges uh, and apply that to my solid right here. And now I can find that back here in the effects control. So I'm going to increase the radius border here. And I'm also going to decrease the sharpness. And I'm also going to play with the scale here until I find something that I'm satisfied with and also the complexity. So this is looking pretty cool. Uh, you can still play uh, with all the other settings uh, until you're happy. Maybe you wanna stretch it out. Maybe you wanna make it, give it a look like this. Uh, it's completely up to you, so play around. And if you, after that, still play with the feather of your mask, you're also going to get different results. So if you want this to happen a little bit less, just lower the feather. And now we have an animation like this. So that looks really cool. I'm going to keep it as is right here. So now we have our transition mat. I'm going to rename this to transition mat 01. And I'm just going to make a duplication uh, for later on. Maybe we want to make another variation of this transition. So now let's go back to our main composition. And what I want to do is just for three seconds, so starting from here, plus three seconds. So one, two, and three, we actually need to rotoscope this out. So I'm going to rotoscope the entire thing. I think that's the easiest way. So now I'm going to click on my roto brush and make sure you're working in full resolution right here. And I'm going to double click on my footage. Now I'm going to start painting on myself and try to make as perfect clean key as possible on my first frame of my footage. Alright, so once you have your first key, let's start playing our video and see how it keys the rest of the frames. Alright, so I think for the video that will be just fine, but obviously if you do a better key, you will get better results. Then let's go back to our composition and solo this layer and let's take a look at the edges. So I'm going to uncheck the transparent layer and I will go to my composition settings and change my background color to a mid gray. That way I will see the edges a little bit better. Now I will go to the feather, set it to something like 10, a shift of minus 20. And I think I'm also going to check use motion blur. Okay, now I'm going back to my project manager and drag in my transition mat right here and I will bring this on top of this footage that I just created. And I will drag this all the way over so it matches up with the beginning of my transformation. And now I will set the track mat of my video that we just rotoscoped to Luma Mat. If you don't see that, you can toggle it right here. And just to be sure, I'm also going to pre-compose my footage. So I'm going to layer, pre-compose, and I'm going to move all the attributes. Roto footage 02. 
and set it to Luma Matte. So now I'm growing using that uh, transition that we made with the white. So everything that is white is visible and everything that is black is invisible. And so while this is happening, I'm also going to introduce the background here because we also need the original background in there uh, just in a very subtle way. So what I will do is also make a mask for the background and I'm just going to bring this off view, press M on the keyboard and create a keyframe for the mask path. And I will bring this all the way to the beginning of this video clip. Then again, select the top part and bring this all the way up. Maybe even exceed the up. And so now I wanna press F on the keyboard and feather this quite a bunch as well. And see what that will do. So I'm going to press U on the keyboard and just make sure that we first see. So now in solo this and first let's see what we're getting. So I'm going to also make sure the background kicks in a little bit later. So we first have the transition going on and then the background kicking in just before the end of the other clip. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. And just because I'm looking down here on the original first clip, I'm going to right click here. Uh, well, first I'm going to split my layer, edit, split the layer and like right click it, time, freeze the frame. So it freezes over there and that way we're not going to get trouble during the transition here. So that looks better. What you can do now is go to the Luma transition mat and add a curves to that. And by playing with the curve here, you can get some contrast in there. And so what I would like to do is duplicate these two. So I'm going to select these two because these two belong together and I'm going to turn them yellow and then press uh, control D on the keyboard to duplicate these. And this time I'm going to make it purple and maybe bring these below. And these are going to be my shadow. So this is going to be the shadow. And I like to do this to create some depth to my scene. So all I want to do here is offset the transition and go to the roto here and press uh, and add a fill to the scene. And here we can add a color, whatever we want. And if we want it to be darker, we can use like a little shadow here and that will just add a little bit more detail to this. You can even duplicate it one more time and change the color this time to blue and maybe let's solo this so we can really concentrate on what we're seeing. And so what I would like to do now is actually replace this transition mat with the other transition mat that we duplicated earlier. So I'm going to click on this and hold Alt and drag this on top. So all that will do is just replace this one with the other one. And not, nothing will have changed because this is an identical copy of the first one. But now we can jump into this one and manipulate this here and change it up a little bit. So maybe we want to lower the feather just a little bit so we have a thinner line and then duplicate the solid layer. And now we go to layer, solid settings and change this layer to a black layer. And now maybe offset it so we have this kind of line. And now it's just a line that is going across our scene. So now we can use this to get something like this right here. And that looks also really cool. And here we could add instead of a blue, uh, a black shadow, we could add a blue light, for example. But the light is a little bit too um, even. So it's very, yeah, it's just blue. So what we can add here is a fractal noise effect on top of the fill. And if we change here the blending mode to a multiply, we're going to lower the contrast a little bit. And that way we're going to get different looks in here. And that just breaks it up a little bit and makes it a little bit more organic. We can even hold Alt and cl uh, click on a stopwatch here and write a simple expression like time times 200, which will just add a little bit of an animation to the evolution. And that way it's going to live a little bit. And now we have something like this. So that looks really cool. Uh, maybe add, and so all now that you can do is um, select these two, just pre-compose these. And then here I'm going to add a solid composite effect. This is just to add a background to it. And I'm going to change the background to black. And here I want to apply a glow. So you can either do this with the standard glow in After Effects, but I like to use the Perfect Glow, which you can download on our website. You can also install it to appear in the effects controls right here. And so I'm just going to increase this a little bit and play with the glow until I'm satisfied. And then change the blending mode here to a screen or an additive. 
And so now you're getting a little bit of glow here around your edges and that just makes it a little bit more digitalized. You can even bring this all the way on top. And so after a little bit of experimenting, you can get some really interesting looks. So I'm really digging this. You can always jump back into this transition mat and play around with the feather here. Maybe you do want to increase it. Uh, maybe you do want to uh, loosen it up a little bit. That's completely up to you. So I'm going to leave that part up to you. You can even add an adjustment layer to all of this and add a turbulence displacement here to add a little bit more variation in there. So one more thing that I like to do now is add a little bit of displacement. So what we need to do is combine two things. We have our Lumamat 2, which is the ripple effect, which we're going to bring over right here. But now all we need is just the part where it's covering me. So we need our roto and we're going to duplicate our roto, control D, bring it on top. And so now I want to use this transition mat and change this to an alpha mat. So it looks at the alpha of our top layer and it's just going to fill in my character. So now I'm going to select these two layers and I'm going to layer pre-compose this and this I'm going to call my displacement map. So this we're going to use as information for the displacement to occur um, and we can even use another transition map for this so we can upgrade this with a uh, transition map 3 for example. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep it as is for now and then create another adjustment layer here. Add a displacement map effect to this one and just choose that displacement map that we just created and increase these numbers right here. And so you can see that I'm also getting this formed, but we can simply fix that by jumping into the displacement map, going to our uh, transition map and going to add a tint effect. And the black color, we want to change that to 50% gray. Now, if you click OK and go back, you should see that it's not affecting ourselves anymore, but it is still affecting the um, line right here. So we have some really cool displacement going on, but not on everything. And there we have it. So now if you want a little bit more of an organic uh, grow effect, go into your first transition, add that same adjustment layer for the turbulence displacement. And we're just going to increase the amount here and also the size I like that. You're getting some variation, maybe some more complexity in there. And now you get like a different look. Look at the difference here. So if we go back, we should get um, and also make sure that you add this um, same adjustment layer, maybe to this composition. So this looks the same. And so now we have this kind of look. All right, how cool was that? Now, one more thing that you could do, and that's to add this exact same ripple growing effect, but add it below your original footage. Uh, so rotoscope yourself out. So in the first layer right here, we're going to just select this one right here as well, the frozen part that we created, and we're going to pre-compose these two. So this is our original footage. We duplicate it. Trim it all the way over here and then open it up with Alt. Uh, so we drop it into a new layer and we can also use the Roto brush here. So go all the way to the beginning and start the Roto. So if we go back to our composition now, we have our roto of ourselves. And all we can do is take our blue animation. So this I'm going to also turn it blue and our original transformation. So I'm going to select these three, duplicate them with control D, put them below the uh, transformation and just offset them a little bit or actually bring them up so they come first. And so now you're getting a little bit of a 3D look and it's actually growing around him as well, or actually around me. See like right here behind me, uh, it's also growing and that makes it look a little bit more 3D in my opinion. So uh, that's something that you could do experiment with and that would be the final result of your epic transformation in Adobe After Effects.
Alright, so that's how to create an epic transformation in Adobe After Effects. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a thing or two. Remember that we have the Epic VFX Academy open. It's still open until the 28th of February, but if you decide to join now until Friday the 18th, you're getting a free portable green screen so you can create some really awesome green screen videos yourself at home. Anyway, it's so much more than just that, but um, I will leave it up to you. Link is in the description and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Until then, create epic videos.